Hi all, good morning. Um, I have with me uh, Shama Wadwale. Uh, she's joining from uh, Pune. She's our speaker uh, and talking uh, on automating the real user scenarios across multiple apps and multiple devices. This is the question, right? What we uh, what um, we have? How to automate? Okay, that scenario on the mobile. For example, how to interact with that alert on the uh, on the browser? How to interact? Okay, on that toast message what we get on the uh, mobile device, right? And interacting and uh, uh, asserting that is tricky as well. Let's hear from Shama. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, uh, based on where you are joining from. Let me quickly dive and give you a quick introduction about myself. I have been working as a senior consultant um, QA at Accenture. Uh, I have more than 13 years of industry experience, uh, mostly focused on QA automation strategy planning and uh, enabling the teams uh, with quality processes. Uh, I'll quickly move on uh, in, uh, to the topic. You know, uh, let's take the first use case, okay? Um, how many of you know Zoom? I just want to make sure that this is an interactive session. I'm uh, expecting you to quickly answer in one word or just give thumbs up, uh, you know, uh, and I'm looking at the chat right now. I just want to know how many of you know of or have used any meeting apps like Zoom or it, it may be WebEx. I'm using Zoom right now for this conference and I see more than 40 people joining this, uh, you know, um, session. So yeah, I mean, quite a few are at least with today's world, right? Like where we are working from home and everything is remote. I'm sure one, one or the other app is being used by you, right? So in this case, let us take an example of Zoom. Can you tell me how Zoom is used for, right? Team meetings, right? And right now I'm using it for the conferences as well. So conferences, it is used, town halls. We have a lot of people joining, right? So basically we have multiple users uh, in the same meeting. And what exactly do you do uh, in these meetings? Right, collaborate, right? You do the collaboration. What else do you do? You're sharing information through audio, video, right? <laughs> Someone says killing time. Okay, uh, so what, what else it is used for? Sharing screen, files, right? As part of the meetings, discussions, presentations. Right now I'm presenting my screen. And what do you think, um, you know, uh, the most common and core use cases are? Of course, multiple users joining the same team and collaborating with each other, right? Now, let us, you know, see where these users are joining from. How do you access this, these kind of apps? It can be your web browser, right? It can be your phones, Android, iOS, it can be desktop apps as well. I'm sure few of you are using from web, few of you are using from your desktop apps or some of you might be also joining through mobile, uh, right? So now let us see how do you uh, test these kind of applications. Even if you have to test it functionally, manually, how can you test these? What are the important scenarios? Definitely, you will not want to uh, test the single user where the user is logging in, the user is hosting a meeting, right? You want to definitely cover the core part of it, which is um, having multiple users joining the same team, uh, same meeting, right? And interacting. You want to test that. And you want to make also sure that all of these users are able to join from different platforms and still they are able to uh, collaborate seamlessly. Correct. Now, in this case, this is about testing it manually, though it is pretty time consuming. Let us say we accomplish that. But now, can you think how can we automate these scenarios? Because with every single build, I cannot be sitting and uh, validating all of these scenarios across different apps, versions, platforms and meetings, different kind of meetings, different kind of personas, a host, a guest, a participant. A conference and a lot of meeting controls, right? So that's not pretty uh, possible for me to do it manually. So definitely I'll have to automate. Now, how do I automate this, right? So if I have to automate this, how can we automate these multi-user uh, multi scenarios? Quite challenging. So let us see how did we solve this problem, okay? 
uh, the tech stack, I'll talk about the tech stack that we are going to, I'm going to discuss in this and I'm going to demo. The tech stack that we have used to solve this problem is using Java, it's a Java based solution. We have used APM for uh, communicating and collaborating with the mobile apps, okay, automating the mobile journeys. Selenium 3, specifically I'm mentioning Selenium 3 because this is not yet uh, bumped up to Selenium 4. We are working on that and soon you will see some updates coming in as part of Selenium 4. Um, and we are using a framework called as ATD, which is APM Test Distribution. This is used to uh, manage multiple devices. And Cucumber, uh, to write the BDD tests. Peak Cloudy integration for mobile infra is what we have implemented, but uh, we have also um, you know, made this compatible running on browser stack or Headspin and Source Labs. And you can name most of the major of uh, the device farms are supported. And then we have created a custom uh, tool or custom framework called as TestWiz. And this framework is created to cater to the multi-user scenarios where this is focusing only on orchestrating between multiple users across different platforms, managing that and doing the collaboration in, in a single test. Okay, let's jump into a demo. Um, so let me first show how a typical single user scenario would look like, right? I don't want to directly jump into multi-users, but there are some single users as well. If you see this test case, okay, it is pretty readable. And the reason behind this uh, using, um, you know, BDD and not using examples and so on, because anyone can come and ask me that, why is it not using, uh, you know, um, implemented using the data driven using examples? We don't want to do that because of the readability, okay? Uh, so this particular scenario is a single user scenario where I say that uh, given I am able to log in, uh, I'm trying to log in with invalid credentials and these are my credentials. Then I again try to uh, log in with another uh, invalid credentials, okay? This is a single user. It is a single app. There is nothing fancy here, okay? And you'll also see certain tags here. What are these tags? So this particular test case can run independently on Android as an independent Android test, independent web test, okay? And this is the app that we are running it on. And this is some, uh, so these two are some additional, um, you know, annotations that we have given to, uh, for us to be able to execute a different, um, you know, scenarios uh, grouped together maybe. But uh, what you can focus in, uh, focus on right now is this, okay? Uh, all I need to do is, if I implement that for Windows, all I need to do is I have to give the Windows tab. So no more code addition, nothing. I don't have to really do anything. Now, let's come to how can I actually automate a multi-user uh, scenario, right? So this is a scenario. There are two users involved. Of course, I'm not going to use a Zoom app or any meeting app in this because I do not have a developer sign build with me. So I'm using an a, a app called as the app, um, okay, which I'll show you shortly. And I have two users, it's I and it's you. I am on Android, okay? I am launching and working on this application on Android and you um, are, on web platform. By default, we use Chrome, but you can also mention Firefox and so on. Now, if you look at this, this I and you are the user personas, okay? And these uh, two, web and Android, it can be Windows and iOS as well, are the platforms. And once you mention uh, the platforms uh, in the given, you need not to mention it every single time. After this, if you see, I'm saying when I, uh, log in again with the invalid credentials, you uh, log in again with the invalid credentials, right? So in the first test, uh, it was a single user who was trying to do login on uh, Android or web, if I run it on web, okay, uh, two different times with two different val invalid credentials. But in this multi-user test, I have two different users on one on web, one on Android, um, doing invalid login. Okay, so let us quickly run this scenario and see how can I run this. So to run the scenario, I'll need to pass on uh, the 
property files. So uh, for Android, I need uh, I need a configurations, right? I need configurations. I need to tell where my app is and all the other attributes it needs uh, for me to be able to communicate with it. So uh, where do I keep all of these uh, files? I keep these files as part of my configs and each app has its own config files, okay? And this case, it is going to be the app config. Along with that, um, I also have a lot of other configurations where I define where my log should go, whether I want to go through proxy, do I want to run it on my local machine or the dockerized environment on CI, um, and what are the target uh, environments? What is the test data file I want to refer to? What is the maximum number of drivers I want to uh, allocate? Or uh, it can be for mobile or it can be web as well. So all of these configurations are men uh, mentioned here. And it all, we also have the uh, integration with Apply Tools, which is a visual validation tool. Uh, so if you want to configure that, what is the configuration file I need to use, whether I need to put it on or off by putting it as true or false, right? So all of these kind of uh, configurations are there and it is in detail, uh, you know, documented and I'll share uh, the links towards the end of the session where you can go and have a quick look. So right now I'm going to quickly run this test. I have my two emulators up here. And this test case that I'm running, as you see, it is on Android and on web, okay? So uh, yeah, my um, app has started getting installed on my, if you see this particular emulator, yeah, this is the app that I am using for this demonstration. So right now, the first user, if you see here, the first user is I, who is going to do invalid login. So this is the invalid login the first user is attempting. And in the same test case, I have another user who will log in through web. Now, the first step as part of uh, my Android app is already completed, right? I'll have another user who will start on web now shortly. We should see a Chrome browser instantiated. This is the Chrome browser, right? Still, my user one is up and running. In the second, uh, the second user as my second step of my test case, uh, my user on web has try, uh, you know, launched the app and is trying to log in. And this is also going to be a invalid login. So if you see, both the users tried logging in, one on Android, one on the browser, and this is through the same test. Okay. I guess we should be able to. Okay, that is it. That's what the test case is all about. Right? Uh, orchestrating between two different. Um, platforms and two different users. And this orchestration is happening through TestWiz behind the scenes, right? Um, it creates the drivers, uh, uses these personas, maps it, and then drives this entire interaction. Okay, that's the test case. Now, uh, let's go back and see how the maybe reports are populated. So I had put uh, the Apple tools as true. Uh, I wanted to capture all of these screens and do some visual validation. Okay, so I'll go and see what's happening on my Apple tools. As part of Apple tools, there are only two settings that you need to do. You need to uh, have your Apple tools key, uh, which is set up as your environment variable. And you'll have to, in the configuration file, you'll have to put it as true so that it will start capturing. And the piece of code that you, uh, you know, I'll just quickly show you one of the, one of the step where it is one single, let me go in here. Mm, I'll just say, okay, 
Okay. And my bag. So if you see, this is the only line that you need to capture these screenshots and send it to Apple Tools. Okay. Um, and check window is the name. You give the screen name, which is already as part of your class. And all you need to tell is what the screen represents. That's it. This is the single line of code that you need to uh, write. And that will do all the magic. You will see your dashboard, uh, your Apple Tools dashboard actually you know, populating all of the screenshots. Okay. And then you can see if there is any visual change and you can, I mean, I'll not uh, get in detail how you can actually go and what are the different ways you can capture and how you can actually run through this dashboard to validate that particular test or not. Maybe I'll leave it to this. Uh, yeah. So that was about the multi-user demo. Okay. Then there is another use case, right? Um, though we have multi-users communicating with different uh, on different platforms, now think about this. I um, I may have different versions of this application. So the Zoom will have you know frequent releases coming in, but I as a user will not update it very frequently. I might or might not, right? Uh, there will be few users still using the previous uh, versions. So we'll have to validate with every single build also if the previous versions are working. And one of the valid case I can think of is think about there is some schema change coming in the new version, okay? And uh, you might want to validate if the backward compatibility is intact or not. Like for example, there are few users still using the old version of the app. And there are new users who have, uh, I mean, the, the, there are few users which have newly new version of the app and they have new schema changes, okay? Uh, and there is a meeting and there are different people, different versions, different schemas who are joining the meeting. They should have no problem and it should be seamless as well. Though you validate it from the backward uh, compatibility tests that you have on the data side of it, the database side of it, and the API side of it and everything, you might also want to validate it as part of the end-to-end -end user journeys. How do you do that? In that case, uh, do I have the same app as part of your, uh, um, you know, um, tests? No, I will have Zoom app for sure, but I have multiple versions of the Zoom app that are multiple apps itself. So how do I orchestrate now the same journey with different users using the same app, but on different and using different versions, right? That is one use case. Second use case, we all have some or the other apps which have you know, uh, multiple apps to communicate and complete one user journey. For example, let us take an example of uh, any delivery app. For that matter, I'll take Amazon because it is globally used. Uh, if you have all, you know, um, observed, the person who comes to deliver your order has a mobile, um, you know, app, who has a mobile app who is using that app. As soon as he delivers or she delivers, uh, uh, he or she is going to go and update that app. And as soon as the update happens, you will see the status updated on your app and you will get a notification. It also happens when you're doing the exchanges or returns for that matter. That person has to validate what um, you know product are you exchanging or returning and then approve from there. Only then the process will happen. Either it is a refund process or the exchange process on your app. You will see those notifications. So this entire user journey of refund or exchange has to go through multiple apps. Again, this will involve completely new different apps to be able to complete one user journey. So how do you now test that, right? Let us quickly look into a demo for multi-user app. And uh, I'll just quickly show a test. Okay, so um, yeah, so this is the test. I've annotated that with seconf. So here again, we have two different users. One is I, one is you. And one user is using a calculator app. For the simplicity, I'm using a calculator app and uh, the uh, demo app that we just use the app. Okay, and the name of the app itself is the app. So I have two different users on two different apps and they are communicating with each other. Okay, so if you see there are different steps performed by these users um, interchangeably. 
So let me quickly run uh, this particular app, um, sorry, this particular journey. And to note is this particular annotation that we're using. It is, it says multi-user Android. Multi-user Android means there are multiple users and both are using Android, okay? And in the previous uh, case, I forgot to mention this. This is a multi-user Android web. That means there are multiple users who are either on Android or either on web. There can be multiple. Okay, there is no restriction to how many users you may have. For this demonstration, I have just used two users, but you can have three, four, five users. And right now, um, I have configured this to have at the max five users uh, on mobile and five users on web. It is configurable. You can increase the numbers, okay? So I'll go back uh, to my test and see what my test case is going to do. Okay, this is a multi-user multi Android. So I'll have my test case running both users on Android platform. So these are my two emulators up. Okay, so the execution has started. I have instantiated uh, the first one, which is the calculator app. Okay, the first user is using calculator app. And the second user, okay, it has instantiated that as well. The second user will have the app. If you see here, the calculator on this side and uh, the app on the other side, right? Let's see uh, what's the next step. The next step is on the calculator app, I should be able to uh, enter two. Yes, it is a little slow for some reason. Okay, and the next step is you press plus. Okay, yeah, that happens. Meanwhile, on this, the other side, if you see the other user on the other app is trying to log in again, it is invalid credentials. The user is trying to log in. Okay, you get an alert. It is as expected, it is an invalid login. And on the other hand, you see the last step is you select five. That is, you have to enter five now on the calculator app, all right? So this is how the orchestration is happening. Though I do not have the same app or two different apps, the delivery apps and all, because obvious reasons I do not have the developer signed APKs. I'm just using what I have and what I can use for the demonstration. But this is pretty much any app and any um, journeys that you want to run. And this is how you can actually orchestrate between two different uh, apps, right? So that is it. Again, we are collecting uh, the visual, we are doing the visual validation and we are collecting all the screenshot and sending it to our AP, Apple tools server. And I should be able to now see the test is completed. Okay, some reason it has failed. Okay. Okay, something from the applicable side of it. Let me see if I missed something. Okay, I guess I was able to capture. Um, yes, I was able to capture, but there is something unresolved. Yeah, I have some differences. If you look at this, I captured some differences as well. Okay. Uh, that's about the demo overall. Uh, that's about how you can actually automate either multiple users or either multiple apps or both to, uh, put together into the single test and you'll be able to automate the real world user scenarios that we have, which involves multiple app and multiple users in the same test case. Uh, this is again open source. Um, I have given the links um, in the references. Feel free, go use it. And if you have any issues, if you have any questions, you can uh, report, ask us, we'll be happy to help you. Um, and other than this, it has multiple other features as well. Uh, you can uh, uh, run it on CI. Uh, we have containerized everything, all the dependencies, and you can integrate that with any major device farms that you might be using. Uh, it may be pcloudy or 
It may be source labs, browser stack, head screen. Uh, visual validation is done using Apple tools. It is a simple two-step. Um, and uh, we have done uh, implement, I mean, we have integrated that with report portal as well, where you will be able to see uh, real time reporting and uh, you'll be able to uh, you know see that. And uh, you should be able to orchestrate the tests. As of now, it is supporting web. Uh, and uh, mobile, it is iOS, Android, and Windows as well, Windows desktop app, uh, not the Windows mobile app. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's about it at high level. Uh, let's open for questions. If you have any questions, you can take up. Yes, Sharma, we have questions. Um, so let me read out that for you, okay? Mm -hmm. So first question from uh, anonymous attendee, how is the setup how is the step definition mentioned for phone and web? How is the step definition mentioned for? Phone and web. Yes. So if you look at this example, okay, phone and web. So it has to be, you have to use multi-user, okay? And then if it has to be web and phone both, then you have this particular use case where you say, multi-user android web so that means few of your users are on android few of your users are on web and then you have to tell who is on what platform in the given section so given i who is on android given you who is on web okay so this is how you can define who is on what platform and this is the annotation that you need to use tag, not annotation. This is the tag that you need to use and you are set. Okay. Uh, Shama, looks like I lost the questions. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Since I rejoined, uh, please uh, go to the Q&A uh, section and uh, we can pick the questions from there. Yes. So the first question is answered. Then there is Harshil who has, can this be run for iOS app also together with web and Android? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. I just showed you one use case here, uh, right? I have showed you Android, Android, Android web, and I have showed you two users. You can have multiple users, one on Android, one on iOS, one on web, you can do that. Um, the second question again from Harshal says, can it be run in parallel instead of sequential execution? Um, parallel execution, yes, you can do. You will have to, um, Again, you'll have to make sure you have a supported infrastructure so that you can execute and distribute your test cases using grid. So right now we have containerized it and we have a Docker Compose here. Uh, you can mention how you want to use it. The third question again comes from Harshil. If we are running multiple test cases in this suite, uh, be executing app and web cases separately at different speed or we'll wait for one test case to get over uh, no, so, okay, this entire, this is one test case, right? So if the test case first step, let us take an example of, uh, you know, uh, let us take an example of Zoom. So as a host, if I, uh, if I host a meeting, right? So that is the first step that needs to happen. Only then the user will, let us say the next step is the user is getting an invite, only then the user will be able to see the meeting details, credentials, and then be able to join. So first the user is, uh, the host is coming in, hosting the meeting. Then this, the participants will get invitation and participant one, participant two, participant three, they all join the meeting. That's how it is. So it's in sequence based on how the users need to, um, you know, uh, collaborate uh, as per the use case. Okay. Let us take an example of your uh, Amazon app as well. Once of let us say, let's take and return example. Uh, the delivery person comes in, validates if the product is intact and then confirms on the app that the delivery person has, then the, or, uh, the refund will be instantiated and then you will get a notification. So the first step, the delivery app needs to be launched and they need to confirm uh, the order, right? That it is intact and they should confirm that this is returned only then the next step will happen. So the first step will be from the delivery app. The second step will be from the customer's app. Okay, so that's the sequence. I hope that was clear enough and I hope I got the question right. 
Um, then there is a question from Nitesh Jain, but how the sync between actions from two user will be maintained because other apps flow maybe depend on the completion of the first. Exactly, right? Only if this is completed, all the validations that you have as part of this step is completed, only then, then you will move on to the next step. If the, if let us say, uh, the delivery app itself, you know, uh, was not able to find your order that you have raised for refund, then you'll not be able to move forward. In that case, you will not go to the customer's app and uh, proceed further, right? So, yeah, it has to be in sequence. It has to be confirmed on one app based on the user. Again, it is based on your user journey, test case, and the uh, validations you have as per every action that you're doing and how it is orchestrated internally as a framework, you can dig deeper into it, but it is managed by TestWiz itself, okay? There is a class called as drivers who actually uh, orchest and manages the orchestration. The next question, can Ritul says, can we use single emulator for both apps? Single emulator for both apps, if you have to do it differently, but uh, this is not, um, again, this is not a single user or, um, you know, uh, the, the demonstration that I have done involves two different apps communicating in real time. If it is not real time, then I guess you can uh, do it that way as well. But that does not fall in multi-app. Mm -hmm. This use case is completely different, Ritul. Um, if I'm pronouncing this correct, uh, the next question is from Vaideshwaran. How the page objects are implemented in multi-driver? Okay, I'll quickly show that. Uh, so this is uh, the step, right? Step definition. Uh, create driver for is the uh, method which takes care of what persona and what platform, okay? And let us say I have providing a details for sign up. This is a BL, this is a business layer, and uh, this is the login method, right? Uh, now, as part of this login method, I have login screen. Login screen get, based on what platform this is on, the appropriate drivers get instantiated, and enter login details. This is implemented for both Android and web separately. So this is where the segregation happens, right? Here is your implementation for Android, and similarly, here is your implementation for web, okay? Similarly, if you have iOS, you will do iOS. If you have uh, Windows, you will do Windows. So the implementation will start segregating once you reach the screens. I hope that was clear enough. Uh, what about reporting like if one step failed for a uh, certain platform will fail entire test case? There are two types of tests, right? It is soft assertion, hard assertion. So uh, I don't want to get into so much detail on those aspects, but I'll quickly so show uh, we are using soft assertions. If you have multiple assertions to be made as part of that flow, and it is not a breaking uh, step. Like if example, for example, if the refund itself, uh, the product itself is not showing up for refund, then I cannot move forward with that uh, journey, right? It does not make sense. So I'll use hard assertion there. Otherwise I'll use soft assertion where I need, now where I have multiple validations and it's okay if they fail, I can capture those failures and I can move on to the last step. What, okay. Uh, Mukhtar says, sometimes why are the mobile tests case running slow? Is it due to, um, one is virtual device. Second one is I have also enabled applitudes. It will take a few milliseconds or seconds also to capture those screenshots and send it to the APM server. Oh, sorry, uh, the applitudes server. So that small delay you can count in as well. But it's not very uh, huge or dramatic. Mm, okay. Uh, Ritul says, can we use two devices on cloud? Yes, you can. Uh, the integration for all the major div uh, you know, cloud uh, uh, device farms are there. Um, you can just put, uh, let us, let me show quickly. Uh, there is a, 
So run in CI equal to false. That's the reason it was running on my local. If I put it as true, uh, it it will uh, connect to you know uh, again you have uh, a different uh, property files here uh, where it needs to pick in what capabilities file if it has to be on source labs or browser stack and so on those capability files will be picked that path is given to the capabilities and then accordingly it will start connecting to your uh, device farm and running the test cases there based on the capabilities uh, it's every, everything is depending on how the capabilities and how uh, you have defined them what devices and the device information uh, and there is one question is android studio is the platform for testing this one android studio i'm using emulator that's the reason i used android studio and launched my emulators uh, but yeah if you have emulators up and running it should be fine this library is available to work with Java only. Yes, we have implemented as of now and supporting uh, everything using Java only. You're free. Feel free to go ahead and extend and implement in any other languages if you're comfortable with it. So, Shama, I have a uh, couple of questions. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, how would you uh, decide on uh, to pick uh, the scenarios that you that you want to automate? Not to so, pick the scenarios. Uh, for example, okay, uh, you said um, apart from this, like whatever we saw now, okay, uh, in the demo. Say for example, okay, now I have to interact with Toast or I have to interact with an uh, okay or an, uh, uh, on an alert or something, okay, of that sort. So how, how do you decide? Okay, uh, okay, I should automate okay uh, this use case. So my my use case is now to go and uh, to automate uh, the interaction on the Toast or alert. So do you have uh, uh, any checklist? Uh, okay. Uh, that you refer to, okay, only if it falls into, okay, this for your six, okay, uh, checklist, yes, 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 only then I'll automate. Otherwise, no, I, I, I'll not pick this, uh, I'll not pick this use case to automate. Do you have anything of that sort? Okay, uh, first of all, when uh, we think about automation, it's not only of uh, about UI automation. Okay, right. Automation has to be across different layers of the application. And if everyone is aware about, uh, it happens to be according to test pyramid, which is the best practice and which is the uh, the right way of implementing it. So I will definitely not cover all the combinations on UI. Okay, when I'm running the test cases on UI, it is always user journey. So if you see, there is no single test case. There is always a user journey, and all these user journeys has to concentrate mostly on if we have any integrations, if we are talking to any third party tools or there has to uh, go across multiple modules and so on. But rest of all the test cases or rest of all the scenarios, okay, can be covered as part of the uh, API workflow tests and below that the component tests and unit integration, of course. But I should not take all of these test cases uh, to the UI. The demonstration per se, I had those validations and all of that, but that is not the only use case that we have. Um, that is just a lack of you know, the demo apps that we have so that I could demo some meaningful user journey. But a typical user journey for, uh, let us take in first use case that I picked up for Zoom should be that the user is able to, a host is able to host a meeting and should be able to, you know, uh, invite a few, uh, can go in their context or can put email IDs and invite few people they should get the invitation and they should be you, uh, able to use that invitation link and able to uh, attend the meeting. And once the meeting is launched, I can validate whether the users are able to do that. If I'm able to, if I have certain controls, right? If I can put everyone on mute or unmute them, share the screen. If the other users are able to see my screen, uh, if I'm talking and if I'm uh, they're able to hear me, Audio video quality part is a completely different, but this is a user journey. Only after all of this, I'm able to share my file. As if I'm sharing certain files, I'm able to do that. And then I can um, you know, exit the meeting and it should be ended for all of them. Or I can also add two or three steps there validating if I'm able to remove someone from the meeting, okay? And if I can give a, a presentation permission to some person and they are able to share the screen or not. These are pretty valid scenarios where I want to cover in one journey. But I will not concentrate on 
validating single component as part of my UI test. I'll concentrate on journeys. The rest of the things are taken care below the layer. That's that's yeah. how I approach. Yeah. So the follow up question here is: uh, uh, when you when you have this thought process, uh, how do you uh, how do you make it of uh, okay? Uh, means how do you separate? Uh, okay, I should uh, okay uh, do these actions at uh, uh, at the API layer, and I should do these actions at the UI layer. So, what's your thought process when you uh, separate those? Thanks, Steve. Uh, this is a little subjective. Uh, uh, in general, as I said, your user journeys matter. How you are spanning across different, uh, you know, components of your application, different uh, user journeys, screens, or third-party integrations that you have, you know. And again, uh, it needs all, uh, to come up with this strategy, which is custom to that particular application, uh, has to be done only if you have a good, uh, you know, context of the architecture, the implementation also the infrastructure, how it is communicating, if it is distributed or not. In that case, do I need to really, you know, um, uh, prioritize this particular test case, but you know, because the behavior might change. So all of these questions should be answered only then you'll be able to come uh, with this appropriate, you know, um, strategy and you'll be able to appropriately distribute your test cases across all of these layers. Right. So uh, uh, my experience and uh, uh, what, what I say is, uh, usually, uh, when we are set to automate uh, at the office, so uh, the and and one who is okay doing the automation for the first time, they think everything in terms of okay automating at the uh, at the UI layer. So uh, most times, okay, we will not get okay. We can do uh, certain things at the AP layer and uh, and also uh, we can include the UI, the both. Yeah. So and this is the mindset, and uh, um, this will end up uh, being uh, very tough for. for for those for those who starts for the first time here. Yeah. So having this knowledge, okay, we can also automate a TOI and API layer and we can clip those uh, in the user in the user journey. That's something uh, very uh, the good lesson okay which you have shared on this talk channel. And uh, I have I see okay a question coming up, but it's not a question. It's okay uh, it, uh, it's a note for you. No question. Um, beautifully explained a uh, very Wonderful session on multiple multi apps and device. Users will definitely like to try out our applications. Thank you for doing that. So we had a, a very good talk and very uh, insightful talk for, for the engineers. Uh, thank you, Shama, uh, for that.